Kutschwitters is one of the major artists of European modernism and he's probably better known for his um, work in Germany in the 1920s and the 1930s. His collages are probably the best known. His British period has been overlooked up to now. The archives uh, that Klaus Henriksen has given us uh, really give an insight into Schwitter's life that you can't really get from his artworks. Because Klaus was interned with Schwitter's on the Isle of Man, Klaus's papers are very important. They're a first-hand account of his internment with, with Schwitter's and other artists there. Uh, so they're crucial in, in finding out what happened uh, in that 11, 12 month period when Schwitters and, and Klaus were together. Klaus felt that Schwitters deserved to be recognized for a great artist and this is why he spent a lot of time and a lot of thought on trying to make his name well known in England. Um, I think there were about 1,500 people in Hutchinson camp. So it was a huge camp and um, Schwitters and Hinrichsen ended up there completely by chance together. Yeah, when you look at the photographs of the internment camp, uh, it, from first sight it looks like a camp, say, in, in Germany or in continental Europe, but looking more closely you see things which are very familiar to us, you know, bed and breakfasts and hotels on the, on the seaside front, uh, manicured lawns, you know, but then you notice the barbed wire and you think, well, this is a bit strange. And then there are people, you know, stood very still, uh, obviously uh, in the morning, being counted. It seems to have been a really fascinating camp because um, it had a particularly high concentration of artists and intellectuals who were amassed there completely by chance. Schwitters, uh, I mean, was the hero of the camp, certainly with the artists, you know. Oh, I can't tell you how many artists there were. They were exhibitions, they had their own theatre. Oh, no, no, Schwitters was a great entertainer, a great entertainer. Schwitters every morning was barking like a dog. Barking like a dog, yeah. I mean, it sounded all quite mad. Well, in the beginning, they had nothing. And obviously, if you are a creative artist, you want to create something. Schwitters collected porridge and he built a porridge sculpture in his room which attracted mice, which got mouldy, which smelled terribly, which was endangering the other floors that it would crack down into the lower room. They had no artist material. They used the oil of when they had sardines, the tints or whatever. They used lino, they used uh, old wood. A whole piano was taken to pieces. They were most inventive, you know. Klaus had very, very long eyebrows, was very proud of them. And as they had no paint brushes, or if they wanted to paint something very fine, they asked him to give him some of his eyebrows. There were musicians, there were scientists, there were academics, there were artists. Uh, and they all coalesced and got together through the Commandant's uh, goodwill and created this incredible uh, university. It's a really nice testament to what um, artists can still produce even if they're in captivity um, and the sort of atmosphere of exchange that existed in Hutchinson. It's, it's a real shame that Klaus Hendrickson isn't here with us today. I guess in some senses it couldn't have happened without him, without his archives being here.
he would be glowing with pride <laughs> or walking around the galleries. I could picture him now walking around and, and telling me about each work as we went and it's such a shame he's not here.